In the past three years, the gig economy has tripled in the US with over 40 million people being a part of it. This means that 36% of the entire workforce in the US is now part of the gig economy. Is the new normal a boon for freelancers and businesses? In this video, I'll cover how you can take advantage of the gig economy and make money along the way. Whether you're someone who's looking for more or a business owner, stay tuned for some tips and tricks. In the past 10 years, I've been a business consultant, had roles in the public and NGO sector, have taught at universities, been the commercial director for a new launch sunglass brand, and currently have my own tech startup. I've made a lot of mistakes along the way and have learned from them. Don't make the same mistakes I have. Let's start off by first of all understanding what the heck is going on. If I have to oversimplify, people have finally realized that how much money you make should be based on the results and the value you deliver and not necessarily on how many hours it takes for you to deliver them. Let's say you get a routine surgery from a doctor that takes only two hours total. You pay 8,000 bucks. You're not paying that 8,000 for the two hours of work the surgeon did. You're paying for the 15 years of studying and experience he has to have to do that surgery in two hours to begin with. We knew this about the medical profession, but have now realized that the same goes for almost any profession. If you're awesome at SEO and can give real life results, then why should you get paid for the hours you put in and not the impact you have on the business. From my experience, the jump into the gig economy has its ups and downs. The freedom of choosing what projects you work on and teams you enjoy working with is great, but at the same time, you must be prepared for the ups and downs in your income as well. One month you're doing great, and the next month you might have to rely on your savings to get by. This is simply the nature of the beast. Of course, once you start growing your portfolio, the downs don't seem as bad. If you're just trying to break into the gig economy, here are a couple of tips and tricks to help you along the way. Number one, occupation versus expertise. If you're coming from the corporate world, then you're used to having a title and occupation. You're a marketing specialist or sales manager or accountant. You need to turn off that mindset. In the gig economy, the question is not what you are or what you studied, is what can you do now? Focus on the narrow actual tasks you can do to add value quickly to your client's business. Number two, always think portfolio. Although short-term cash is always great, if a client or project is great for your portfolio, then make sure you get it regardless of the cost. When businesses make decisions on who to bring in for a certain project, they always have an eye on the portfolio. Small tip here, get recommendation letters or testimonials from your happy customers. You're gonna need it in the future. Number three, price for value. Pricing is probably the hardest part of jumping into the gig economy. How much did you ask for doing a task? A lot of the portals like freelancer.com or Fiverr will ultimately push towards the hour rate. That is okay because that's the rule of the game. But when you start talking to the client directly, always talk about added value and results, not how many hours it will take for you to do the task. Number four, bank on yourself. Ultimately, you are betting that you can do more and be better than you were in your previous job. Never forget that. What this also means is that you have taken the responsibility to stay relevant. When there's a new tool, a new method, no one's gonna come and train you like they would at a corporation. It's your job to stay ahead of the curve. So read, learn, and if possible, teach. For all you viewers out there that have their own business or startup and are generating demand for the gig economy, I also have a few tips for you. Whether you're a manufacturer or in the entertainment services industry or even in the agricultural services industry, then there's a value you can gain from accessing and using the gig economy. That being said, just hiring a freelancer is not going to cut it. You need to be prepared to work in this field so you're not left with a bitter taste in your mouth, which is a lot of the time the experience that you might have. Before you jump in, here are some quick tips. Number one, scope, scope, scope. Before you start working with any consulting firm, freelancer, or any other party from the gig economy, make sure you are super clear on what exactly you want. This seems like a trivial point, but I can't tell you how many times I've taken meetings where the other party simply doesn't know what they want. Make sure you have a clear and defined set of functions you want to be executed and know what kind of timeframes you are expecting. If you find that you're unable to source partners for that scope, 
reassess your scope. Number two, results are only results if they can be measured. You need to define success criteria upfront. When the scope is over and the project or function is completed, what set of parameters do you use to say this was successful or this went horribly wrong? Those parameters need to be objective as possible, thus the need for them to be measurable. Now, I understand that there are cases where the output takes more of a subjective element like branding or copywriting, but even then, the rules of engagement engagement should be predefined so that both parties walk away satisfied. Number three, you don't own their time. Always bear in mind that although you can and should be demanding when it comes to the scope that you defined and the results that you expect, you do not own their time time. That is the beauty of the gig economy. You are paying for the scope and results, not for the time. Answering the phone on demand, taking quick meetings, being physically present, reporting the day-to-day -day operations are not within the job description. You gave that gig to that person because they are experts. Trust them to do their job. When used correctly, the gig economy can be a great place to source talent for a short-term fix you might need, or a fresh perspective of a certain business issue, or you just want to mix things up in your company because things have become stale. Don't be afraid that it might not work. Trust me, the upside is worth it. Thanks for being with us. Please help us out and subscribe. I'll see you next week.